So here we have a power spark DB7659A. And what I'm going to do is show you how to replace the friction wheel. So you can see kind of what mine looks like because some of them are red. Uh, this one's black. This is a 208cc. 22 inch width so <clears throat> what I need to do today is get inside here and change that friction wheel because right now it is mighty chewed up so first thing we're gonna do is take these wheels off and the way we're gonna do that is on this side you can pull this pull this clip over and it'll come it'll come right off of that little stud and then you can pull the pin out this way so if we take and we go There we go. And then see you can you can pull this pin right out. So that's how you take the wheel off and then my wheel's just gonna slide right off because I have it nice and lubricated, which is a good suggestion to do. Lubricate your wheels real good. So we're gonna go ahead and do that on the other side and then I'm gonna get the camera set up so that I don't have to handle my camera too much because I'm gonna have greasy hands. So, be back in a minute. So this one, you already saw me pull off the pin. So, you can see it just kind of slides right off. Pin number two. comes off nice and easily because of lube. Everything's better with lube. So the next thing we're going to do is take our, our I'm going to use an impact wrench or an impact uh, driver but you can use whatever you have. You can use a socket, you could use a Phillips head screwdriver but I find that the impact driver is just easier. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm using a uh, number 10 uh, socket. So um, you should be able to use the same thing. So now that we have those bolts undone, uh, you can simply just uh, remove the cover. You can see here that the drive disc is awfully worn. I mean, there's even a big chunk missing right out of here. No good. No good, no good, no good. So. That's what we're going to be working on today. So, if you don't know how a drive disc uh, mechanism works, there's tons of videos on that on the YouTubes. You can check out. Okay, so first thing we're going to want to do is take this 
take this plate off for the uh, shifter and so that we can get this little guy to release from this guy so let's go ahead and do that so it looks like this is also going to be uh, just a 10 millimeter so let's see if I can get my socket in here And what I'm trying to avoid is having to remove this roll pin right here. Could be a little bit hard to see. This guy right here. Right there. That is a roll pin and I don't want to have to remove it and I don't think we have to. So, let's go ahead and Get this shifting rod out of the way. Now that we remove those bolts, you can see that the shifting rod is free of the part that we want to get out. So that's what we need. So now, the next step is literally going to be uh, over here. We got this bolt right here. Um, we uh, want to take that one out and there's also one over here on this side. My hands are kind of greasy, I don't really want to move the camera too much. So, uh, the strategy for doing this is going to be put a wrench on this shaft here because it's hex shaped and then uh, put another wrench uh, over here on the bolt and then you should be able to use one to hold the shaft uh, <clears throat> hold the shaft from moving so you can get the bolt to come out so let's uh, see what size we need and proceed so it looks like um, 17 millimeters is going to do the trick for us so I'm going to use one of these guys, crescent wrench, whatever wrench, um, and then just the socket. I'm going to use the socket out here because it'll be easiest. And I'll use the wrench on the shaft inside so that it doesn't move. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing on this side. And make sure you put these uh, 
this nylock nut in this washer somewhere where you won't lose it. Uh, and let's see what we get. Okay, so now what we're going to do is on this side, we're just going to tap and it should move, should move the whole shaft. So let's see what we get. Here we go. So now we got our shaft along with bearing because I don't really feel like pulling it off. I don't think it's necessary. So there you go. Might want to take a second just to look at your shaft. Make sure it's not all chewed up. Which this one looks uh, really good. So that's good. So now you can kind of get a really good close look at this friction wheel and I mean it is chewed up. So I think what was causing this issue is I think the drive belt is too, the drive belt, ugh. the drive cable I think is adjusted too tight. I think that's why this keeps getting chewed up because this is the second one I've replaced in uh, four seasons of use and pretty light duty use I mean maybe a dozen times a season so no good so this is the new friction wheel Big difference, big, big difference. So one thing you want to make sure that you do first is make sure there's no grease or any lubricants down here on this plate and make sure there's no grease or lubricants on your, on the rubber part of your friction disc. So like this part here. Now, I was just in here a couple weeks ago and like lubricated this shaft really well. So, I'm going to add some more lubrication to it. Um, but, I just want to point out that while you're in here, you might want to take care of the uh, lubrication of the shaft. Now when we put this back in, what you'll want to remember is, is that this, this doohickey here is where, is where the gear shifter uh, rod has to go into. So that has to be on the right side over here. Let me see, kind of. Just right. Line it up with the gear over here so that the gears mesh together. And pop 
pop it through like so. So then you can see that the gears are mashed and everything good. So now we will connect back up the shifting rod. So, and put those bolts back in, uh, right in there, and on the other side over here. All right, so now I got those two screws back in, and you can see this is nice and solid now and uh, should be able to shift. Crank the shaft, the friction wheel spins nicely. It's exactly what we want. So like I said, go ahead, you know, add some lubrication along the shaft because as you shift gears, this friction wheel moves left and right. So you wanna make sure there's plenty of lubrication on the shaft. If not, it's really gonna be really hard to shift. Um, or you'll feel a lot of resistance when you shift. So, just one thing you want to take a look at. Um, so, I mean, right now, I mean, uh, all you have to do is put these bolts back in on each side. got some never seeds laying around and might want to put a little bit of that on there. It'll help if you have to do this again in the future. So then we'll take our wrench and our 17 millimeter socket. We will tighten this bad boy up. So I'm going to tighten the left side slightly, you know, just snug. And then I'm going to get on this shaft. Now I'm going to tighten the right side. And then go ahead back to the left side and make sure that it's really tight. Okay. So, you know, there's lock nuts on this side, so that helps it, you know, if you just get it, just get it, you know, nice and tight. You don't have to um, put a whole bunch of torque on there, but just get it nice nice and tight and then with this side there's a nylock nut um, but you you know again just get it really nice and tight um, might be a good idea to take a rag and wipe this friction wheel with some kind of light solvent like a, a carb cleaner or even like isopropyl alcohol I'll probably use alcohol because that's what I have um, but at this point, I mean, all you gotta do is put your cover back on and you're done. So, hopefully this helps somebody that has this snowblower and they have an issue where either their snowblower doesn't move or it's just, uh, you put it in first gear or second gear and it just hardly moves at all. That's a sign that your friction wheel is not contacting your disc very well and you might have this issue or Maybe you've just had it for 10 years and you've never had to change it. So lucky you, but hopefully this video helps you. All right, thanks for watching. Later.